Honorable Member for Calgary North. Thank you, Madam Speaker. It is an honor to be with you in the traditional territory of Treaty 6. I also acknowledge the Métis people who share a deep and historic connection to these lands. I want to thank the constituents of Calgary North and all the volunteers during the previous election for giving me the honor and privilege to be their MLA. I would also like to congratulate all my colleagues in this legislature on their election results. No matter which side are we on in this legislature, we can all agree that there are no bad seats here in this chamber. Although I must say, Madam Speaker, your seat seems most comfortable. Again, <laughs> congratulations on your election as Deputy Speaker of the House. Madam Speaker, my family moved from a small <coughs> farm town in Pakistan to Canada. Like many others, we moved in pursuit of better economic opportunities. I am the second youngest amongst seven siblings. I was 17 when I came to Canada. As a newcomer to Canada, I had to face many basic challenges such as <clears throat> cultural norms, social cues, and language. My first day in English class at Crescent Heights High School, I was told to finish reading Shakespearean play Hamlet so we could discuss it in the class on Monday next week. At, that, at this point, I could barely understand Canadian English, let alone Shakespearean English. Let's just say that my old English to Canadian English dictionary and my Canadian English to Urdu dictionary were working on overdrive that weekend. <laughs> It wasn't until years later that I realized that no one really understood Shakespearean English anyways. <laughs> I graduated from grade 12, then rece uh, and, uh, received my diploma, in, later received my diploma in petroleum technology from Southern Alberta Institute of Technology. Mr. Speaker, the year was 1979. Peter Lougheed was the premier of Alberta then, a leader a leader who fought a hard political fight for the people of this province. After graduating, I started my career as a field technologist at the Gilby Field Office near my favorite Alberta town, Rimby. There I worked for two years, became familiar with the rich cultural culture of rural Alberta, developed lifelong friendship, and, al and, and also learned game of curling. <laughs> Being young and eager to try games that I had not seen before, I also tried cross-country skiing. As most, of, as most of my time trying cross-country skiing was spent on my back, <laughs> I decided it was better for me to focus on my career. Because of this, Madam Speaker, I was able to save money and put, to, put that together towards furthering my education. I was lucky to be granted an educational leave of absence by my employer. I joined the University of Wyoming and completed my Bachelor of Science degree in petroleum engineering in 1983. I then returned to work with the same employer. Those were the good times, Madam Speaker, when Alberta used to, be, uh, Alberta used to have lots of economic opportunities, not only for Albertans, but for people across Canada. This phenomenon later became known as the Alberta Advantage. Now, living in the city of Calgary, where I had earlier experienced social, uh, language, and cultural issues as a newcomer, I decided to get involved in the community so I could help those facing the same challenges I did. This, Madam Speaker, became such a fulfilling and rewarding experience for me. This an enjoyable experience for me. This is when I realized the importance of giving back, the importance of helping others when they need it. The 10th Premier of Alberta, the Honorable Peter Lougheed, 
is quoted as saying, I am a community person. I think in terms of community before individual, that is the essence of Albertans, and to a large extent, that is the essence of Canadians as well." Unquote. This quote has inspired me to do as much as I could for the community around me in Calgary and now here at the Legislative Assembly of Alberta. I served as president of Pakistan Canada Association for many years while also volunteering intermittently with organizations such as United Way, Junior Achievement, Canadian Red Cross, Food Bank, Mosaic volunteers, and others. During this time, while I was raising my two sons with my wife, Praveen, I began <coughs> to take evening classes, completing my master's in engineering and MBA. Madam Speaker, I strongly feel that whatever I have been able to accomplish has been linked with my employment, and in particular, Alberta's oil and gas sector. This is why it is so saddening to see the same oil and gas sector, which used to be an economic engine for, of Canada, is suffering from the adverse economic impacts over the last few years. This is the feeling, Madam Speaker, is shared with many of the constituents in the writing, I am honored to represent Calgary North. Madam Speaker, my writing is amazing. I have lived in this riding or, or in the northern part of Calgary for 35 years. And in this riding, specific, uh, this riding since 2003, I have made Panorama Hills my home for the past 16 years because I truly believe Alberta is the place to live, work, and raise family. For that reason, my family and I are eternally grateful for all Alberta has given us. The riding is beautiful with its schools and small businesses, beautiful paths and walkways, parks, a golf course, and spectacular views of the city. There are a number of languages spoken in the riding, including English, uh, Tagalog, Punjabi, Cantonese, Mandarin, German, Spanish, and Urdu, and few more. 43% of the population in Calgary North identify themselves as immigrants. I do plan to work closely with this uh, population and other Albertans as applicable in my portfolio as Parliamentary Secretary of Immigration. This spring, I met so many amazing constituents who gave freely of their time and effort as we worked together to bring back the Alberta advantage. The comments, discussions, and advice at the door has been immeasurable value to myself and to our government. I want to thank everyone who gave me their trust to be their voice in the Alberta legislature. I am so proud to serve the communities of Evanston Creekside, Hidden Creek, Panorama Hills, and Carrington, with Panorama Hills being the largest community in Calgary with a population of 26,000 people. One doesn't have to go walk far in these communities to find a network of extensive green space, spaces and parks, bike paths, and winding creeks for families to enjoy. Just outside my riding is a first-class recreational athletic center called Vivo. Even though it is outside my riding, it is still a vital, it's still vital to Calgary North. This rec center is widely used by residents of Calgary North, including my own family. Vivo is committed to promoting healthy life style by offering several programs and services for all ages. This facility partners with academics to offer a living lab whose research is to explore how to live healthier. Since its inception, the facility has been the recipient of provincial grants allowing the center to expand its facility and programs, particularly 
to the many students who live in the riding. I think we can all agree that one of the most important investments we can make is educating our children. Alberta is committed to providing students with a safe learning environment. This is why our UCP government has pledged to maintain or increase educational funding. My constituency has four elementary and one junior high school. It is, however, in dire need of a public high school and a middle school. That's true. I pledge to be a strong advocate for the schooling needs in Calgary North. The most devastating thing I would hear at the door was that of layoffs and high unemployment rates in the province. Engineers, accountants, IT professionals were a small example of professionals who were struggling. We need to get our resources to market. We need to get Alberta's oil to market. People are struggling. People are leaving our great province. Madam Speaker, time is of essence. That's why I am so proud to be part of a team that is 110% committed to spurring the economy. We will, we will stand up for Alberta pipelines. We will stand up for Alberta oil. We will stand up for Alberta, period. Here, here. As promised, during our election campaign, we will lower taxes so we can create more jobs. We will reduce regulatory burdens so we can create more jobs. We will foster a positive economic environment in the private sector so we can create more jobs. By creating more jobs, Madam Speaker, we will balance the budget so our children don't have to. I am therefore very pleased that this government is focused on getting Albertans back to work and restore the Alberta advantage. The people of Calgary North sent me here for a reason. We in this house have a special obligation not only to our own people in our own riding, but Albertans across Alberta. We are here to make a difference. Together we can and we will. Thank you, Madam Speaker.